Now today, while the nation suffers under the weight of $19 trillion in international debt, we in Indiana have a $2 billion surplus, the highest credit rating in the nation, even though we've cut taxes every year since I became governor four years ago. We have fewer state employees than when I took office, and businesses large and small have created nearly 150,000 new jobs, and there's more Hoosiers going to work than ever before. That's what you can do with common sense Republican leadership, and that's exactly what the no-nonsense leadership of Donald Trump will bring to the White House. You know, Donald Trump gets it. He's the genuine article. He's a doer in a game usually reserved for talkers. And when Donald Trump does his talking, he, he doesn't tiptoe around the thousand new rules of political correctness. He's his own man, distinctly American. And where else would an independent spirit like his find a following than in the land of the free and the home of the brave? The funny thing is, You know, the funny thing is, the party in power seems helpless to figure out our nominee. The media has the same problem. They all keep telling each other that the usual methods will work against him. They, they keep thinking they've done him in, only to wake up the next morning and find that Donald Trump is still standing and running stronger than ever before. The man just doesn't quit. He's tough. He perseveres. He's gone about as far as you can go in business, but he's never turned his back on the working men and women who make this country grow. And Donald Trump will never turn his back on those who serve and protect us at home and abroad. You know, It's been a heartbreaking time for the women and men in our law enforcement community. And in this time of great testing for them, let's let them know, here and now, all across this country, we will always stand with those who stand on the thin blue line of law enforcement in America. Now, you know, while Donald Trump was taking my measure as a possible running mate, I, I did some observing myself. I've seen the way he deals with people who work for him at every level. And I've seen the way they feel about working for him. Now, I'll grant you he can be a little rough with politicians on the stage, and I'll bet we see that again. But I've seen this good man up close, his utter lack of pretense, his respect for the people who work for him, and his devotion to his family. And if you still doubt what I'm saying, remember, as we say back home, you can't fake good kids. How about his amazing children? Aren't they something?
These are the true measures of our nominee, chosen by the voters as the right man for these times. This is the outsider, my running mate, who turned a long shot campaign into a movement. Now, over in the other party, you know, if the idea was to present the exact opposite of a political outsider, the exact opposite of an uncalculating truth teller, then on that score, you got to hand it to the Democratic establishment. They outdid themselves this time. I mean, at the very moment when America is crying out for something new and different, the other party has answered with a stale agenda and the most predictable of names. People in both parties are restless for change, ready to break free of old patterns in Washington. And Democrats are about to anoint someone who represents everything this country is tired of. You know, Hillary Clinton wants a better title, and I would too if I was already America's secretary of the status quo. You know, the choice couldn't be more clear. Americans can elect someone who literally personifies the failed establishment in Washington, D.C., or we can choose a leader who will fight every day to make America great again. It's change versus status quo. And my fellow Republicans, when Donald Trump becomes president of the United States of America, the change will be huge. For years, we've had fundamental problems in America that get talked to death in Washington, D.C., but they never get solved, and they even get worse. We've seen entire stretches of our country written off by bad economic policies in ways that are deeply unfair to American workers. We've seen relentless mandates from the executive branch. It seems like no aspect of our lives is too small for the present administration to supervise, and no provision of the Constitution is too large for them to ignore. Meanwhile, we've seen borders that go unrespected, a military that's been diminished, and promise after ringing promise to our veterans promptly forgotten. Then Donald Trump came along and started saying what practically everybody was thinking anyway, that our leaders need to be stronger. Under Donald Trump, our deals will be smarter. Our soldiers will have what they need, and our veterans will have what they earned. We will secure our borders, protect our nation. In all this, we will be more serious, and when we do, this nation will start winning again. You know, that's the message that men and women in both parties have been longing to hear. But none of us should think for one second that this will be easy. The outcome of this election depends on us and how we contend with an incredible onslaught that's coming our way. You know, this won't be America's first glimpse of the Clinton machine in action, as Bernie Sanders can tell you. And this time around, she'll have the press doing half her work for her. The good news is it won't be nearly enough. Not against a candidate who's captured the attention of the country the way Donald Trump has. On issue by issue, he and I will take our case to the voters, pointing out the failures of the Obama-Clinton agenda and showing a better way.
We will win the hearts and minds of the American people with an agenda for a stronger and more prosperous America.